Uh, good morning, brothers and sisters. Long time no see, although I'll be seeing the TGIF people a couple hours from now. Um, but I'm so thankful that we can still worship together even though things aren't that great in the outside world right now. Um, I'm a little rusty, <laughs> to be honest. I haven't led worship in a while, but hopefully we can still worship God together. Um, so just to let you guys know, there's something new we've been trying out since last week. So we're actually providing chords for you guys, as you can see in the welcome slide. And also, if you check in the description box below, there should be a link. And if you click on the link, you'll find chords to every song that we sing. So feel free to sing along, play along with any instrument you have. Even if you use pots or pans, we welcome that as well. <laughs> um, so please join us as we worship our God today as a congregation. Um, so just to start, um, I would like to share with you guys a verse uh, from Colossians chapter 3. 3, 15 to 17 in ESV. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with, thanks, with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. There's a peace of
Almighty Father, I just want to thank you for who you are, for the peace that you bring us, Lord, peace that cannot be attained from things of this world, but peace that only you bring. I thank you for this opportunity we have to come before you, to worship you today as your children, as your chosen people, as a holy nation, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before our last song, um, I would like to just share with you another Bible verse. It comes from John chapter 16, verse 33. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulations, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Surrounding me, let it break. At your name, still call the sea to still, the rage in me to still. Darkness tremble, Jesus. 
to live Call these lungs to sing Island again I won't praise Jesus, Jesus You make the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus You silence fear Jesus, Jesus You make the darkness tremble So I will read our scriptures for today. Um, they all come from uh, they come from chapter uh, from the book of John. Um, so first we'll read um, chapter fourteen, verse one. Um, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And then from the same chapter, verses twenty five to twenty seven. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. And then from chapter 16, verse 33. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulations, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Good morning, brothers and sisters and friends and neighbors and everyone who joined worship together this morning. Welcome to SGBC's English worship. Welcome to this time that we can share this moment. Hopefully it's a moment of peace that we can gather together in God's name, that we worship Him together. Peace is something that everybody wants. Throughout our life, there are times that we are at peace and we feel good. There are times that we have no peace at all. We could even have a good sleep at night. But what is peace to you and to me? And it could be different. When we think about peace, we think about war. When you think about war, we think about peace. There are two things that are always related to each other. When we are at peace, we sometimes go for a fight. When we are fighting and at war, we look for peace. Is peace a personal thing? Is my peace the same as yours? Imagine if I, in the middle of the night, midnight, I want, went to take a shower and sing loud in the shower, enjoying my time, try to, have to, to relieve my stress, my pressure, and then have a good sleep. At the same time, my noise could interfere with the neighbor's sleep at the time. We could be interfering with each other. My peace and your peace could not be different and could not be the same either. Is it an internal thing? Is it an external thing? Imagine in this time of the year, we walk to the downtown Toronto. It seems to be peaceful, quiet, 
Nobody's around. But when you do that now, I don't think we will have peace walking downtown by myself or by yourself. We are affected by the surrounding, not only internal feeling. It's a physical feeling or spiritual sense. I can imagine people, they could be sick on the hospital bed, but they have peace in mind. And I also can imagine people have a lot of money in a secure home. They seem to be having peace all the time. But their spirituality, the spiritual, the spirit could be sick. And they have no peace in mind at all. Peace in the Bible is the same as what we thought in this world. It's just about battling, fighting, peace, quietness. It's more than that. Shalom, the word we find in the Bible. This word is different from the other ones. It's not just the natural peace that we're looking for, not just about safety, not just about health. It's also about fullness. Fullness means the blessing of God to the top, to overflow. You cannot feel it anymore. It means wholeness. It's not only one aspect, in all aspects, the wholeness of this peace and also the completeness. Nothing more, nothing less. It's just right. 100% completeness. Peace is not only about individual, it's about this society, about the whole humanity. When we go back to the Bible, think about this shalom, where it started generations and generations ago. In Genesis, it tells us, after God created Adam and Eve, he asked them to be fruitful, multiply, multiply and fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over every living creature, every living thing, in the sea, in the sky, and on the earth, everywhere. There, at the beginning of humanity, there was peace. The peace between man and God. The peace between Adam and Eve. The peace between man, humanity, and animals, and the other creatures. Just imagine that not only we can have cats and dogs as our, as our pets, but we can have lions and tigers and even elephants as our pets. But, but, that peace didn't last long. After the first sin of Adam and Eve, the peace was broken. They started to blame each other. They started to blame God. They started to blame the devil. The killing started. Abel was killed by his brother. The earth was not the same anymore. It was cursed. Thorns and thistles were there, impacting the cultures, the, the, the agriculture. The growing of vegetables and, and plants are not as smooth and easy and fruitful as before. The peace was broken. We have been like that for the last ages and years and years. If we continue to be in this situation forever and ever and ever, that would be a disaster. But by God's grace, it's not going to be last like that forever. Through the prophet Isaiah, God told us there is a future, there's ultimate peace. At that time, God will answer our, our call before even we call for him. God will listen to us even before we start speaking. The wolf and the lamb shall graze together, and the lion once again, it straw just like the ox. It's amazing. This disaster is not going to last forever. There's a hope in the future that peace will come back to us, to the humanity to all the creatures, to the creation. But from then, 
in the past, original peace, to then in the future, the ultimate peace. We are now in the middle, in this current generation. How do we get over this transition time? By God's grace, mercy, he asked Aaron, the brother of Moses, to bless the people. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face upon you and give you peace. Shalom. God asked Aaron and the priest to bless his people, the people of God. Bless them with the peace of God. But that have to continue. No wonder the Jewish people, they always, when they see each other, they say, Shalom, peace be with you. And they, when they say bye to each other, they say, Shalom. Until next time, Shalom is the looking and wishing, looking forward for the peace of God, blessing unto them. But that's not enough. God's mercy and grace didn't stop there. Through the prophet Isaiah, Again, God tells us, tell the Israelites, tell the humanity, Messiah was going to come. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. This Baby son is a wonderful counselor. He's the almighty God. He's all power. He's everlasting from forever to ever. And most important at the end, it says, is Prince of Peace. He's the one and only one who can bring the peace back to earth, to us, to humanity. That's the promise of Messiah going to come to the Israelites. And they were longing, looking forward for the coming of Messiah for over the ages. And 700 plus years after this prophecy was said by Isaiah, in Luke 2, 43, it says, The birth of Jesus, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to the people God loved. And the next 30 years for this little boy, he's grown up among the people. He's associated with the people. He grew up just like us, from baby to the boy, to a teenager, to an adult. He's associated with the humanity. He's among us. He's one of us. He knows exactly how we it's like in our life, in this life of a disaster in this earth facing death, facing sickness, facing loneliness. The next three years of Jesus' life, he spent with his disciples, teaching them. And then, on one day, on the mountain, he's talking about the Beatitudes. And one of them says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called Sons of God. Jesus is the only Son of God. Jesus is the only mediator between man and God, or humanity and God. But how could you and me, the disciples of him, become the peacemakers as well? Jesus brings peace to us, brings peace between us and God to restore the relationship God's peace upon us, the fullness of this peace upon us. Our lives is different from before, and people see us as different. How come you Christians have such a peace that's different from us? That's the time we can be the peacemaker. We can introduce God to them, bring them to God. We can bring the peace between them and us. We are the peacemaker, bringing them back to God. In these three years when, God, when Jesus was with the disciples, 
He's teaching them, preaching to them, telling them the truth, telling them the Gospels, the Gospels of God's peace on earth that can restore the relationship between man and God, restore us back to God. And also throughout these three years, more than three times, Jesus has told the disciples, he's going to die, he's going to suffer, but he will come back in three days. Finally, come to this moment. Just before Jesus was about to be persecuted, just before he, was, he would be took, taken away by the people, in the Last Supper, after they finished the Last Supper, after Jesus washed the feet of the disciples, after Judas was away to finish his plan to betray his Lord, after Jesus told the disciples to love each other just like he loved them, Jesus knew that his disciples was in trouble. They were in trouble. They worried. And Jesus told them, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. Jesus told the disciples that he's going to prepare the places for them. Jesus told them that he will be back. But he knows the disciples were still very troubled, worried, fear, not knowing exactly what's going to happen next, not understanding what his Lord, their Lord is talking about dying and suffering and coming back. He, they have not understand what's going to happen next. Jesus continued to comfort them. These things I've spoken to you while I'm still with you, but I'm going to ask my Father to send you the Holy Spirit. He will teach you all things and help you understand the things I have been telling you all these three years. And not only asking my Father to send you the Holy Spirit. I'm going to leave with you with the peace, my peace I give to you, Jesus said. Not as the world gave you, it's different from the kinds of peace the world can give you. The world can give you the kind of money you have so many, so much, that you think you have this peace. Until you see this virus now, the money cannot buy you anything. The mask you put on face does not guarantee 100%. The money may not even give you a peace of mind to sleep well in the evening, making sure you can get up in the morning. Our hearts are still troubled. But Jesus left the disciples with his peace that the world cannot give. Don't be afraid. Jesus also told his disciples they are going to suffer. You know, this world hates me, Jesus said, and they are going to hate you as well. They are going to hate these disciples. The world hates us. The world don't like Jesus, and they will not like us, the disciples. Jesus said to them, I have said these things to you. I have given you the warning now that in me you may have peace. In me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. You will have trouble. You will have problems. You will have suffering. But take heart. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. Jesus said, he has overcome the world already. The death, the sin, the chain of death, Jesus has overcome those already. At that time, the disciples wouldn't understand. They were hiding. After Jesus was taken away, they were hiding. For the next few days, they were hiding behind the doors. They were hiding away from the people. They were afraid of being caught by the people. They were afraid of suffering like, the, like their Lord, Master. They didn't want that. They didn't want that. But after three days, on that evening of that day, the first day of the week on that Sunday, the evening, after they heard from the, from the women that the Lord has risen, the Lord has come back alive, the disciples still worry. Is it true? Really? They were hiding behind the door in the house, gathering together. 
And the Lord appeared to them. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Twice. And accept the Holy Spirit. Jesus breathed into the, unto them and received the Holy Spirit, saying to them. Jesus came back. Alive. Holy Spirit. Upon them. Peace upon them. Thomas was not there. Thomas was missing in that meeting. He wondered when the disciples, the friends, and telling them, our Lord is back. We have peace and Holy Spirit now. Thomas said, no, no, no. Not until I see the Lord myself. Not until I can touch his hand and the body. Eight days later, the Lord appeared to them again. Peace be with you the third time. And he told Thomas, for those who have not seen me and believe, they are blessed. Are you blessed? Have you seen the Lord Jesus before? I have not. I am blessed. I have not seen him, but I believe. I have the peace of the Lord. Do you have the peace of the Lord? Do you believe and are you blessed? I hope that we sincerely believe in Jesus Christ. Not sincerely believe that we believe the Lord. More than 500 disciples have, said, have seen the Lord, the resurrected Lord in those days. They all have this peace of the Lord. In the book of Acts, he has recorded a lot of what's happening in the churches at the time. What's happening to these 500 plus people? What's happening to those new disciples who believe what these people are telling them? Testifying for the Lord who has resurrected from death, who has overcome the world. Stephen, the first one being stoned to death, the last word from him was asking God, Father, to forgive these people who stoned him to death. The church was persecuted and scattered. The people was not, the people, the disciples, they were not hiding, hiding behind the doors. They were scattered, but they went everywhere to spread the gospel because they all have the peace in their heart, in their spirit. They don't want to be killed and persecuted, but they have the peace and they continue to spread the gospel. James, the brother of John, was killed with the sword. And Peter was the next one after him, being seized and put into prison. They all went through the same thing, difficulties, persecution, suffering. But they all have the same thing, the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even the famous Paul, Apostles that we all know. At one time, this Paul, or the, he was called Saul at the time, he witnessed the death of Stephen, and he was happy. And he approved that death. He has the power to seize anybody he wants and put them into prison and to, into death. This power he has gives him the kind of peace the world can give him. And he thought what he's doing was pleasing to God. And he thought he has this peace by using his power to execute the Christians until, until the day he met Jesus Christ himself. Jesus appeared to him and asked him, why you persecute me? Why, Saul, you persecute me? After that, Paul changed 180 degrees. He changed. He was transformed. He gave away the power that he thought can bring you peace, but he did not. He gave away his status. Instead of being respected and scared by the people, now everybody rejected him. The priests rejected him. The Pharisees rejected him. Even the disciples, apostles of the Lord rejected him because not sure if he's really transformed or not. Paul was alone, but he had the peace in him. He knows exactly what he's doing and why he's doing after meeting the Lord. 
since then, you and me and many disciples throughout the generations, we continue to receive this peace of Jesus Christ after we became his disciples. No wonder, no wonder, Paul, at the end of his ages, when he's getting old, and when he was in prison, he shared this in Philippians with the people. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be known to God, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. All understand, nobody will understand. And this peace will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. I have this peace as well. Over the last 10 years since I first diagnosed with this Parkinson's disease, these hands, and now these hands, never at peace. It's been shaking. Even my body, my legs are shaking now. It's never been peace, especially the last few months. But my heart has always been at peace. Because I know, just like all the disciples, and I believe, just like all the disciples, one day, as said in Revelation 21, God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. I know and I believe one day my sickness will be healed, will be gone, will disappear. But for now, and I also think maybe one day I'm not only unable to preach anymore, I may not be able to walk anymore, I may even lose my mind. But I know for sure I will not lose the peace in me. I hope you and me, and disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, I sincerely, I sincerely believe in the Lord Jesus. Not sincerely believing that we believe. I hope we really have this peace in us. One day, when we see each other again face to face, I hope we can hug each other and say to each other, in Christ, shalom. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Let's look forward to that day that we can bless each other. And let's wait for that ultimate peace to come when we see our Heavenly Father. Let's pray. Jesus Christ, thank you. You are the peace of God. You have the peace of God. And you're the Prince of Peace. You bring us this peace. Thank you. Thank you, Spirit, that you guide us and help us and comfort us in this disaster time on earth, especially in this pandemic period. Difficult for us. And you help us, comfort us. Thank you, God, Father. We look forward to the day we see you face to face. And we will have this peace with you forever and ever. Thank you. And we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. May God bless you all. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Leo, for sharing such a great sermon on the peace that um, we get from Christ. Um, many times we try to seek um, different types of peace and different types of comfort um, in things of this material world, whether it be possessions, food, other people. Um, but really, the truest and best peace comes from God, from Christ, um, from the Holy Spirit, um, from the salvation that we've received from, from Christ's um, greatest sacrifice on the cross. Um, so let's now sing a song of response. It's a peace 
what the world cannot give. It's a peace that the world cannot understand. Peace to know, peace to live. My peace I give unto you. My love I give unto you. It's a love that the world cannot give. It's a love that the world cannot understand. Love to know, love to live. My love I give unto you. My peace. My peace. I give unto you. It's a peace that the world cannot give. It's a peace that the world cannot understand. Peace to know, peace to live. My peace I give. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome you to, for joining our worship this morning. We give thanks to God for his provision. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your generosity. We keep praying that all that we are, all that we have, will be used by God. Offering prayer, let's give thanks to God that he has given what we need and also to be able to give. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much. We uphold your name. We praise your name because you are our faithful Father. As we have seen your, your, your grace and your mercy and your faithfulness, we can really have the peace in, in Christ, even despite what happens around us, despite the circumstance and situation. You already have given us Christ to die for us, to give us that peace that transcends all understanding. Thank you for giving us what we need and so that we're also able to give you that is owned by you, our whole being. Father, as we give the offering, may you bless it. May you also give us wisdom to how to use it towards a kingdom and how to Spread your love to people, to the community. Father, as we're praying, we have our country, we have our nation, we have our whole world, we have our cities, we have our communities in our minds, as well as our friends and our families. We know that this is not an easy time to go through, but we have you to bring us through. Every single day, you have guided us to see from the perspectives of God. So, Father, we pray for the nation and also the cities as we reopen gradually. Father, may you give the wisdom to the government to know what the next step is, also to give the people hope and also self-discipline. As we're praying, we're also praying for the frontline health workers. Continue to protect them. Father, we also pray for the people who are suffering, whether physically or whether emotionally, when they feel lonely, when they feel depressed, when they feel sad. Father, may your peace be with them. We also pray for the Love in Action campaign that our church is doing. So we want to spread your love through our hands and through our feet to those people to the people in need, bring food, bring masks, 
uh, helping them dry stuff. <laughs> we thank you for giving us the ability to do so. And because of your abundant love that has motivated us to serve in love as well. Father, we also pray, continue to pray for uh, brothers and sisters in Christ here. We should know that a children worship has been resumed today and that children can come together, uh, really together, to worship you. And so, Father, may you continue to speak to them and bring them up. Bring them up through their families, their parents, their siblings. Bring them up through uh, our adults at church, through love. Thank you, God. And may you continue to look after our small groups as we continue to gather and we study your word. We want to deepen our faith and also our relationship with you and so that you know how much you have blessed us, how much you have loved us, and how much you are using us. Be with all the students as they are finishing up their term this year. Be with them because they, some of them might be missing convocation or graduation. Comfort them and know that having you is the greatest blessing that we have. And other things, when we, when we fix our eyes on Jesus, everything will grow dim. Thank you, Lord, for being such a great God. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for giving us a church family that we belong to. Thank you for making us your chosen people, your holy nation, a royal priesthood, special possession of yours. May your name be praised. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we look into what this week is about, I hope that you already gone to the church website and see our newsletter this week. Very excited, a very exciting thing because our children worship has been resumed and is gone online every Sunday morning, 8.45 or 10.30. Pick a time, get your kids, uh, get your little children to come worship God together online and also, of course, in spirit. We also have uh, love in action. Remember that we were doing the cloth masks, making a lot, thousands of cloth masks to give out, and many people have been blessed by them. And now we are going into the next stage, the next step is love in action too. And we are doing meals on wheels with Care First. All the details have also been uh, put on the newsletter, so please go on the website and take a look and really participate and join if you can. There's another thing that we can do to bless our community because there are pe people in our communities that are really in need, especially uh, families who have lost their homes because of fire, and this is the case right here, uh, right this moment. Restore Canada are receiving clients that are in need and asking the community to donate stuff they can. So they need clothes, they need diapers. Details have also, are also on the newsletter. And the drop-off time and date is on the PowerPoint and also on the newsletter. Please, please go and see what you can give to help them out. Last but not least, I know this is Alpha in Cantonese, we're English worship, but you know what? We all have relatives or friends or family who might, be, who might speak Cantonese who might not be believers, who might be seekers. And this is a great opportunity for them to hear the gospel, to hear what the Bible is about, to hear the Creator God. So June 3rd to July 5th, we are actually doing an Alpha Cantonese course twice a week. You know, please register there. Let's receive God's blessings. May I invite you to stand and receive the benediction from the Lord. May the God of peace himself make you entirely pure and devoted to God. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept strong and blameless until the day when our Lord Jesus Christ comes back again. Amen. Brothers and sisters, shalom, peace in Christ. Stay safe, stay blessed. Thank you.